Thank you. Okay, so we're in a series called Back to the Basics. Okay, so uh, if you're in the back right here, hopefully you have your Bible. You're going to need to grab it. Uh, I just want to talk to you about a few things that have to do with quiet time. So uh, when you first hear the word quiet time, what do you think of? I'm going to put some things up on the screen in a second, but what do you think of when you think of quiet time? Just the word. Don't, okay, don't talk. Punishment. <laughs> Punishment, okay, great. What else? Reading your Bible, okay, cool. Spending time with God. All right, let's just put a couple of things up there. These are actually the things that when I just ask people that don't know anything about God, uh, that's what they say. So what do you think of when you think of quiet time? Punishment. So you guys ever been put in the corner? Uh, when maybe mom and dad said, hey, you know, you need to do this, and you didn't do it, and then, you know, okay, you need to sit in the corner, you have a little quiet time, right? You ever heard that before? Okay, some people think it's punishment. Uh, someone might say, well, uh, I'm going to have to be still and silent for how long? Oh, wow, that would be terrible. Well, that's kind of our culture, isn't it? We, we hear that word, we think, oh, my gosh, I can't do that. So, well, here's another thing you might say, or you might hear someone else say, hey, what do you think about quiet time? Uh, well, uh, why would I do that when I can watch the next episode of dot dot dot, right? We have all the streaming services, so why be quiet when I can just watch something on the TV, right? So, and then uh, last thing, is it really that important? Being quiet in any form or fashion. Well, it is, we're going to talk about that, okay? So I would, I would venture to say that if, if this is your idea, maybe you, you think of quiet time and this is what you're thinking, I would say a couple of things. Either you, you don't know God, you don't have a relationship with Him. So if you're in the back, if you're in here, uh, focus in on this. Uh, if you think of punishment, uh, I have to be still and silent for how long? Why would I do that when I could just watch something you know, on TV, on Netflix, Hulu, whatever it is? Uh, or is it really that important? Probably your relationship with the Lord is just is really, really basic. Maybe not anything that's really important to you. Maybe you do know God, but you're just not that serious about it, okay? So I want to talk to us, talk to you guys today about why that's important, all right? So let's go to the next one. So... What Jesus did. Let's look at that. He sought time for just him and his father. Do you know how many times in the Bible? This is just in Jesus' short ministry. And by the way, he didn't start his ministry until he was 30 years old. I'm going to be 30 this year. So 30 years old, he starts his ministry, and he only does it for about three and a half years, right? Like, well, wow, that wasn't very long. Well, everywhere that Jesus went, right, he got really, really popular, really famous. So everybody wanted to come and talk to him. And then he was constantly seeking time, though. People were... Hey, you know, can you heal us, Jesus? And he would just disappear, and they'd be like, where did he go? Where did he go? And he was spending time with his Father, Father God. So, let's take a look at this. If you guys have your Bibles, go ahead and get them out. Mark chapter 1, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, a couple other things have happened uh, before this passage takes place, but I want to read it for you, and then we'll kind of go into it and talk about it. So, Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 39, and it says, and rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed, and Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. And he went out throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and casting out demons. So, just a couple of things I want you guys to look at, and then we'll talk about it. So Jesus went somewhere that no one would be, right? Okay, so that's one of the things you need to do. Uh, when no one else was up, right? Have you guys been up when no one else is up? By most of you are like, uh, not if I don't have to be, right? And then the third thing, uh, no one knew where he went, right? Now I'm not saying like go off, don't tell your parents where you're going, that kind of thing. Uh, but maybe figure out a time and a place where you know you can be quiet. Just no one else is around. You're just sort of spending time with the Lord. That's what he wants. So. And the fourth thing, uh, he was given clarity, power, and direction. All right, that's pretty cool stuff, right? So if you guys ever wondered why you're just constantly, you're going about life, and you're like, I don't know what to do here. There's this life situation, something changed, I'm about to go to college, like, what do I do? Or you know, I'm going to high school, and there's all these new things that are thrown at me, and like, friends are t beginning to change, and I say, hey, why don't you just come to this party with us, and don't worry, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on, and, you know, People having sex and drinking, just getting wasted. Oh, oh hey, by the way, there's going to be this new, this new thing they're doing, and um, just you know, just take a pill out of the out of the little, little container. Nobody knows what it is, but it's going to be fun, right? So nobody knows how it's going to affect you. But it'll be great. Okay, so some of those things, and we and we wonder why afterwards we're like, why would I do that? I just don't understand, and I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. And but the problem is, we never actually spending that time with the Lord, like quiet, like seeking Him, right? You might be amazed at how much clarity, how much 
power and how much direction you would get if you would do that, just like Jesus. So uh, here, here's what's going on in Jesus' ministry. So this is before this passage. Uh, he's going around, he's healing people, uh, people bringing the, these demons to him. And by the way, if you look at the beginning of Mark, uh, people are bringing these demon-possessed people to Jesus. And as soon as they get close to Jesus, they stop talking. So they're going crazy, you know, obviously. I mean, that guy's demon-possessed for sure. Then when they get close to Jesus, the Bible tells us that because they knew who he was, they just stopped talking and they were completely silent. You imagine, they're like, oh, whatever they're doing, whatever demon-possessed people do. And then they walk up to Jesus and they're just completely silent. And he's like, okay, get out of him. And the guy's like, wow, what happened? Right? So this is what's going on. People are seeking him out. And actually, right before we get to this passage in Mark, one of the disciples' moms is sick. All right? So Jesus cares about him. He does. And so like, he's healing everybody else. And the disciple says, hey, you know, my mom's sick. Would you be willing to go and visit her? And he's like, yeah, sure, let's go. So when they go, they heal her. And then all the people in town, they hear about this. And they're all just swarming the door. He can't get out. He can't leave. So again, Read this stuff in its context because it's important. That means read the pat, read the part before this passage and the part after. And so they're all there and like, peace, you know, heal us. And so Jesus says he has compassion on them and he goes to the door and they're bringing people to him and like, oh, this guy he can't see. All right, okay, you're healed, right? You can see now. And this guy he comes up and he's demon possessed. And he says, okay, you're no longer demon possessed. So he does this just over and over and over again. And here's what happens: people are swarming, and eventually he gets to the point where he's like, you know what? I gotta go and I gotta be with the Father. All right. Have you ever been in that place where uh, maybe you're not popular, maybe you're not famous or something like that, but maybe just, you know, there's a lot of people around you and you're like, I need to be somewhere where I can just be alone, right? Have you ever had that feeling before? Yeah? yeah. Well, in the same way, God wants us to spend that time with Him that gives us kind of that peace and that clarity, peace of mind, right? So after this happens, again, people are still coming to Jesus. He's going to heal somebody else. So keep reading that. There's this guy with leprosy that comes to Him and He ends up healing him also. Uh, but people just keep following Jesus, okay? So let, let's look at just the verses and let's break them down just really quickly. Verse 35, it says, uh, what happened? He, very early in the morning he left who he was with, and while it was dark he found a place to pray. Now, maybe you guys are not, uh, more, who's a morning person? I can't see you in the back of the region here, but if you're a morning person, right, nobody in here is a morning person. Okay, just me. All right, and Austin and uh, Zach over there. Okay, cool. So uh, Jesus got up early. It was because nobody else was awake. He left. He went and he was spending time with the Lord, right? And But maybe you, you're like, maybe I'm more aware of things in the middle of the day. Or maybe like at night, like my wife is a night person, okay? So uh, for us, uh, I get up early and I do, th I do things. And then uh, Christy in the evening, right, when we put the baby to bed, she's doing her quiet time and that kind of thing. So we each get to do that and we get to talk about it, okay? But... Um, it doesn't really work for you to be like, hey, you know, you have to do this then, right? Because at night, when Chrissy's doing her quiet time, I'm just like, okay, when are we going to go? When are we going to go to bed? I'm like super tired. And I'm not going to get anything out of doing that, okay? So in the same way, Chrissy gets up in the morning. She's not a morning person. I'm like, okay, just do what you need to. I'm going to spend time with the Lord, and then when you're ready, well, we can start talking, right? And so that's okay. If that's you, that's all right. But just remember, there's, there's a time and a place that God wants you to spend time with Him, okay? So... And here's the other thing. He didn't ask disciples to go with him, right? You go and you spend time with the Lord. Typically, you're not going, hey, um, brother, sister, friend, you know, would you come with me? We're just, you know, we're going to spend time with the Lord. That's really for like when you come to church fellowship. There's nothing wrong with doing that with like family, having discipleship time. But there's this really special time you're supposed to have with the Lord each day. It's just you and him, right? And Jesus gave us the example for that, right? So he was there. He was with no distraction, right? So then for verse 36 uh, there's this guy named Simon, and he said, uh, uh, those who were with him, they, they searched him out, right? So they didn't know where Jesus went. And they come to him, disciples, and they, they go, oh, no, right? They can't find Jesus. They go, oh, no, we, we lost Jesus. Can you imagine being one, one of Jesus' disciples? Like, they know, he, he keeps, you know he's God in the flesh, right? And they're like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to tell people we lost God? We lost God. Where did he? You know, people are going to be really upset because they're going to come to us and say, hey, Jesus has been healing people. He's been casting out demons. Could, we need him to do some of that stuff. Can you imagine what a mob of people who, they come to him and they, they say, yeah, uh, we lost Jesus. We don't know where he went. What? I can't believe you lost him. Okay, so they're very worried about this. They know that the people that are all around are looking for him, right? And then we get to verse 37. It says, they found him and they said, everyone is looking for you. It's not like Jesus doesn't know, right? So he's God at the same time. So remember, he's aware of everything that's going on, even though he's a man in the flesh, and he's praying to God, but yet he knows that's going on. The disciples come and they say, hey, Jesus, uh, funny thing happened. Um, you disappeared. 
and uh, not cool, all right? So here's what we're going to need you to do. Uh, we're going to need you to, whenever you're thinking of like going and spending time with your father, God the Father, that's cool. That's a good thing, right? We want you to do that. But if you could make sure you could check in with us before you leave, then that would be great. Um, then that way nobody's going to be scared, confused, because you're le our leader and we didn't know where you went, okay? So I uh, said, so just, just remember, okay, we don't want to lose you. God of the flesh, you're really important, so please don't run off. Just make sure you tell Simon or John, one of the other disciples, before you leave, just so somebody knows where you are, okay? And then we get to verse 38, and he says, he says to them, right? So does Jesus go, hey, guys, yeah, I'm really sorry that I left you, and um, I'm just, I'm really upset about that, and you're right. Uh, I should not have left and said anything to you, but I was going to go, I was going to spend time with God, but you know what? Your feelings are more important than that, and um, I, even though I had this really special time with God, he told me exactly what we're going to go do next. Um, I'm really sorry, and I shouldn't have done that. Is that what Jesus says? No, he's like, he doesn't even answer the question. We were looking for you. We didn't know where you were, okay? So please don't do that again. And he said, uh, let's go to the next town that I may preach there also, right? Because that's the reason that I came to earth, right? And so I think, it, guys, a lot of the time you, you see these things, and to me it's comical because we can apply it to our lives, but it's also God in the flesh talking to his disciples. And so... What are you supposed to pull from this? In verse 38, Jesus is always about the business of his father, right? He's going to God to figure out that purpose. And I know you guys are going to school, you're going to work, wherever you're going. You have a family time. And something's happened in your life. Maybe it's somebody who's gotten sick. Uh, maybe it's an opportunity for you. Maybe it's a sport. Maybe you're like, you're so involved. You're doing all these other things. And you get home and you're just so exhausted. You go to bed. You get up the next day and you do the thing. Same thing. And then you wonder, like, I thought that maybe being really good at sports, maybe being really good at school, uh, maybe getting that job that I always wanted. I always wanted to work at Sonic, you know, and I finally got that job. Don't laugh. I worked at Sonic. I worked at Sonic. I loved it. So, yeah, food was great. So, <clears throat> maybe you've tried some of those things and you just realize that none of these things made me happy. None of these things brought me joy. And, and the whole time, Jesus is trying to get his, even his disciples to understand, look, God, the Father, has given me direction. i got to spend time with him so I can, so I can know what we're going to do, right? Get me re-energized, right? So I, I would just challenge you guys, maybe if you're, you're at that point, you're just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to do with my life. I, uh, I'm just constantly not happy. I'm trying to fill that void with stuff. I'm guessing it's because either you, you do know Jesus and you're just not spending time with him, or you don't and you need to give your life over to him. Okay, so whoever that is in here, uh, we'll give you guys an opportunity to make a decision about that afterwards. But um, I wonder, if maybe we lived more like Jesus, right? A lot of things would be different, okay? So that's easy for me to say, right? I'm not perfect either. There are days that go by where, let's say, Alana's got sick in the middle of the night. She's thrown up all night. We're up like every, you know, 10, 15 minutes, which is great. It's happened several times. And uh, so we're just constantly getting, uh, okay, are you okay? Ah, yes, yeah, just, just really, you know how you feel like after you throw up? And then you're like, I feel the best I've felt in a very long time, right? Because you got a lot of stuff out of you. And, uh, but then, right, you're like, I'm not feeling so good again. <laughs> so I'm just watching my daughter going through this, and it's awful. But at the same time, I'm, am I going like, oh, man, Jesus, okay, uh, I need to spend time with you. Okay, Lana, don't go anywhere. I'll be back in an hour, right? You know, Christy, you go, you go rest, or I know you're tired. Um, baby will be fine, right? She'll be fine. <laughs> Which in real reality, she's not going to be, so we're taking care of her. Am I getting up the next morning going, oh, God, so looking forward to spending time with you. I, just, I can't even keep my eyes open. Guys, there's stuff that, that goes on. They got, he still wants to spend time with you, but you need to understand you, you can't beat yourself up either, right? So rough day, right? God's going to understand, but just make that time for him as much as you can, okay? Which it should be every day, but those things are going to go on, right? So let's go to the next slide. Let's keep going. So why is it so important? Uh, this guy named Charles Spurgeon, um, cool guy, never going to meet him because he died a long time ago, but uh, he said a lot of good things. He was a pastor, uh, really just giant church, and it uh, helps you understand kind of who he was. He uh, preached to thousands and thousands of people all the time, right? Now, I don't have a really big voice, so I like to talk softly with a mic, just so when I go home, I can still talk to my wife and daughter, which is great. Uh, but when you go to this guy's church, they didn't have amplification. They didn't have mics and speakers and stuff. And so uh, when you go there, there would be like three, 4,000 people in there, and he would be preaching to everybody without anything like that. He would just be yelling 
what was going on, right? And he did that for years and years and years. So, but here's something that he said, really important. Uh, it's a good rule never to look into the face of man in the morning till you have looked into the face of God. All right, now stop, stop there, okay, stop, because nobody was like, I'm not a morning person. That's okay. Uh, getting older and having kids in life, that may change a few things for you, but... Spurgeon understood the importance of spending time with God, right? And it it came before really doing anything else. Now, maybe you're like, look, I just can't do that. I'm going to go on my day, and I'm going to spend time with the Lord in the evening, okay? That's still okay. He was trying to tell us that there's this really important thing that you need to do and spend time with the Lord, okay? So here's just one note. So uh, didn't do your quiet time. Here's something to think about. Uh, do you ever wonder why your interaction with people doesn't go as well when you don't spend time with God? And this happens to me all the time. Like, there's some people that rub me the wrong way. Like, oh, you get mad at people? You're a pastor, you shouldn't do that. It actually happens all the time. So, uh, so I just, uh, I'm able to conceal it better than most people probably. But I also spend a lot of time with God. And that's part of it. So when somebody comes up to me and they say something, hey, you know, Michael, um, you know, this thing really bothered me. Or somebody cuts me off on the road. I was, uh, was coming back from a conference last night and uh, I was on the motorcycle. And it was like an hour away. So and I love driving at night. There's just not a lot of people out. So it's just not as dangerous. And so I'm just driving down the road, and people, oh, for some reason, always on the motorcycle, they always want to race, you know, race. Come on. And they pull up in their car, which is clearly slower than my motorcycle. And, of course, I'm not going to race them. But uh, they pull up, in, and they're, like, revving their engine, you know, like some little, you know, Camaro or something like that. And they just take off. I'm like, okay, that's fine. That doesn't really make me happy. You know, they slow it down, slow down again and come back to you, and they're, like, driving all around. Just leave me alone. Okay, just I'm going home. All right, so people will, you know, like they'll bother me a lot like that, or even just maybe um, somebody's personality rubs you the wrong way, and they come up to you, and you're just like, I don't really want to talk to you, but I'm not sure how to say that. Well, uh, there's a way for you to be nice, there's a way for you to be kind, there's a way for you to be godly with those individuals uh, that maybe you don't relate to the best, and it comes from spending time with the Lord. Okay, so our kind of our gut reaction when they, we get in those situations to be like, get away from me, you know, I don't want to talk to you, or you know. Uh, do other things that people do on the road, which I'm not going to talk about. You get that angry at people. So uh, maybe, maybe that's part of the problem. So you, so you didn't do your quiet time. And I remember um, there are uh, there was a friend of mine, um, really more of a mentor, that he'd always ask me, like, you know, if maybe I was having a bad attitude or I didn't do something that, you know, hey, you know, you really didn't handle that situation well. I was like, why would you say that? That makes me even more angry, right? And I say, did you spend time with God? It's like, no. I did it. That's why that happened. Okay, so uh, that happens, guys. Okay, so just, I mean, maybe make that change. You might realize how different your relationships will be. Okay, so here's another note. Uh, this is your quiet time. Just something to think about. Uh, God is preparing people. Uh, we're going to talk to, however, we have to seek God for the right heart and mind in order to carry out His will. So uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I do this for a living. Um, I'm a pastor. I talk to people on a regular basis, all pretty much all day long. Uh, about God, about things that have to do with Him, our church, the Bible, you know, all that great stuff. But I'm an introvert. So you guys know that. Do you know what introvert means? No. No? Like you like to be by yourself? Yeah. Jason, good job, man. So a college man there. College. So you like to be by yourself. You knew the word. So, uh, yeah, I, the, one of the, and I love being with my wife, my daughter, I do. Uh, one of the things I love the most is even, like I, like last night, just driving down the road on my motor motorcycle, able to clear my mind. I'm kind of by myself, but I'm also talking with the Lord. And so that's what I love the most, not being around tons and tons of people, although I love you guys. I do. But I wonder, if you are doing your quiet time, then maybe God's preparing those people, those places for you to go to and talk to. I always know that when I'm confronted with a situation... Uh, in order to, to share the gospel or just talk to somebody about church or God and uh, the Holy Spirit, which lives inside of me, by the way, lives inside of you if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and it prompts me to do something or go or to talk to, you know, go and talk to that person you know, about, about what I'm doing for you and, and your life and how you're so blessed. And I said, well, God, I'm kind of having a rough day and, um, you know, I didn't spend time with you and so I'm just not really sure I'm feeling it, right? Have you ever felt like that? You know, you know God wants you to do things, but because you're not going to Him, you're not preparing to have those conversations, to do His will. Whenever it comes time for you to actually do that, you're like, God, I'm so, I'm so tired. I just I don't really feel like it. And that happens to me too, okay? So, but I wanted to remind you guys that if you are doing that, then you should be able to do those things, okay? So, I want to just run over another passage with you. It's not up there. Uh, it's Jeremiah 17, 7 through 10. Just a reminder for us that where are really our, kind of our strength and our power and our ability to, to do what we do on a regular basis, okay? And doing God's will comes from Jeremiah 17, 7 through 10. It says this, uh, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, 
whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for it leaves, its leaves remain green. It's been raining a lot, so you guys see green leaves and green grass. It reminds us of that. And not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and it's desperately wicked. And who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart, test the mind, to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. So here's what I think we do a lot of the time. And here's another one of our justifications why we don't spend time with God. Well, I mean, I know what's best for me, right? You know, when it comes down to the decisions I need to make in life, things I need to do, I, I, I mean, I don't really need God to kind of help me out with that. Well, how's that working for you so far? Really, really great? Really good? Maybe some of you can make some good life choices, but at the end of the day, if you're not spending time with God, if you're not seeking Him, then those things, those really important decisions when it comes in life, and you, those will come up, maybe some of them already have. You're like, what am I, what am I going to do? You graduate from high school. Uh, I don't know, you know, what am I supposed to do? I just don't know. I, I mean, I wish I had some sort of direction. You know, you're telling people that. I don't know what to do here. I don't know why I'm here. What am I supposed to do? But then you never go and you talk to God about that, okay? So God wants us to come to Him, and He doesn't. He also doesn't want us to do this, and that's why He said that. That in that same passage about trusting in the Lord, He says, "Hey, there's this thing called your heart. It's not literally like necessarily the thing that's you know pumping blood inside of you. Uh, all of what kind of gives you decision ability, you know, conscience, the things that you uh, do on a regular basis, the decisions that you make. And God says about our own ability to make decisions like that, innerly, he says that our hearts wicked." Of anything else, right? So when people say, no, just follow your heart. Just follow your heart. That'll lead you in the right direction. And I can tell you on more than one occasion, my heart does not lead me in the right place. The desires that I have, the things that I want to do, are, are usually not what God wants, right? Kind of interesting. Uh, Christy and I uh, came here three and a half years ago, came to this church. And what God started doing when we left the place we were at, we had, we had a big house, really cool house. I loved it. Big shop. Uh, big garage, it was really awesome. Because um, I liked working on things, so I had that. Um, things were going really well. I thought you know, we were making good money, so we ended up uh, leaving, coming here, and I sold our house. Kind of got had to get rid of a lot of things because we were moving to a smaller place, which I love. We actually live right, right here behind the church, but we couldn't have all the stuff that we had before. And I said, God, you know, I really don't like that. I really like the things that I had, the things that I had accumulated. I mean, I liked where uh, I bought a house. I mean, that was mine, after all. It wasn't yours. It was God's. And so God decided after a really short time, we had purchased that. We thought we were going to be here forever. God says, no, I want you to go somewhere else. I want you to go to Irving. We were living in Gainesville, which only had 16,000 people. And if you know this area, there's a lot more people than that. And uh, so I really love I could go outside. I could see the stars in the middle of the night in my, at my house in the middle of town. Now, you can't do that here. And so I just loved it. It's like, oh, why would you do that? Well, God's blessed us immensely being able to come here and do the things that He has, but it, it took a lot of really hard conversations with God, just reassuring us, saying, I want you to be here, I want you to do this, okay? So let's go to the next slide. A couple more things for you in our small group. So how do I do? I don't know how to do it. What am I supposed to do? I know we're supposed to do a quiet time, but I don't know. Oh my gosh, and I don't know. I get up in the morning, and it's like, oh, I'm supposed to do something. Or at night, I'm going to bed, and uh, I... I know Michael said something about that. I know God wants me to spend time with him, but I don't really know how to do it, so I'm just not going to. Right? Conversations happen all the time in your mind, I'm sure. And so how do we do it? Well, you got to pick a time, right? So so everybody in here pretty much was nine, nine person, right? Yeah, yeah. No, dude, I'm not getting up at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning doing that. Uh, so you pick a time. Maybe you do your schoolwork, right? You spend time with some family. And before you go to bed, not. Because here's what some people do. Uh, God, I'm going to spend time with you. Hold on. Let me get my pillow, and uh, all right, uh, okay, just, uh, God, I love you, and uh, it's morning, my alarm is going off, right? So, I don't know where that came from, by the way, it was on the stage. Um, oh, cool, okay, so it's ours now. Uh, so, you got to pick a time, right? So, don't, don't, you got to pick a time in the right place, don't do it uh, when you're laying on your pillow on your bed, because when I get to that place, <laughs> we get, get to bed, Christy loves it, she doesn't, but... I'm telling you anyway. So we get in bed and she starts talking to me. And I'm the kind of person, I'm a morning person. So when I lay down, and uh, it doesn't take very many sheep for me to fall asleep. It's usually like 10, okay? So that's a cool ability that I have that other people wish that they did. My wife does. So you got to pick a place, right? So don't don't make it be that place you're going to fall asleep immediately. Um, and you got to pick a kind of like a material, like pick an app or a study. Hey, there's actually something really cool. 
I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, I told you a few times. Uh, Dana actually writes five times studies for us, so they're back there on the back table uh, by the TV. So uh, grab one of those. We got one for every single month. Okay, I'd love for you to have it. Uh, but I wonder, Kevin, try have you tried doing any of those things? Okay, um, because if you don't, if you just say, well, I'm just going to do it, and you don't do any of that stuff, then you're not actually going to do it, right? You're going to end up continuing to find that. Uh, you will never actually follow through with that. Did you know it takes 45 days to start a habit? Or you have to literally, you have to go, I don't really feel like doing this right now, but I do it anyway. It takes 45 days of you doing that to wake up on the 46th day and be like, I'm just going to do that because I feel like it. That might be so hard to like do a diet and to like, you know, to read my Bible and yeah, you, you, I mean, I, it takes forever to start the habit. So you guys have got to be committed to do this, okay? Just pick a place, pick a time, pick a place, uh, pick an app or study. I'm actually going to show you guys something because I say just use the Bible app, which is great, but then I didn't show you how to do it. So uh, we're actually going to show you that slide, and I'm going to walk through it just really quickly, okay? So it looks small. If you go over here to the big screen, you take a picture, um, that'd probably be better. Um, there's actually a few steps, okay? So it is complicated uh, to do it. There's actually a quiet time app that I use. Uh, it's called just quiet time. You go on, you got to pay some money for it. It's like 20 bucks a year. You don't have to do that, okay? Um, I do because I like it. The Bible app is a great one to do too. So go on Google, go on uh, your iPhone, whatever that's Apple Store, and find this, okay? So I just want to walk you through these steps, okay? So step one, you don't know what to do. You don't have a plan. You're not going to take one of those pieces of paper back there because you lose stuff. Uh, whether it's in the car, in the bathroom, you drop it on the way out from church. That's okay. I'd rather not waste paper and kill more trees. So I'm nature friendly or eco friendly, whatever that is also. I don't like a lot of paper, so please don't take it and throw it in the trash. But if you're on your phone all the time anyway, well, you can spend your time doing better things, okay? So here's the first thing. Step one, uh, click on plans, all right? So if you guys haven't already downloaded it, you should do that, okay? You should do that because it will help you go through the steps. Uh, step one, click on plans. And it says, you know, you may download this, whatever version. Click, you know, if you download a version and you don't have service, self-service or Wi-Fi, you can actually continue to use it, okay? So... Uh, here's the second one. There's a little home button down there at the bottom. you got some other things. Click on plans. Plans. What does that mean? It's just some things are going to help you have a Bible study, have a quiet time. We've got on a regular basis. So, uh, all right. Then the next one, you're going to go to uh, pick top. Okay, so here, here's what this is. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you don't know what, like, topics uh, you want to talk about. You're like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to learn. I open my Bible and I just get bored because... I don't really know what it means. Well, there's actually some studies you can go through. So maybe it's love. Maybe, guys, maybe you're looking for love and you just don't know where to find it. And, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God's love for us. Okay, so uh, love, you can click on that one. Grace, uh, men, women. So that's not like Craigslist. Like you're not like, I wonder who I'll find today on Craigslist who would like to spend time with me. That's weird also. Don't do that. Um, so uh, men, women, that means like studies for men or women, boys or girls, same thing, okay? Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff in here. Maybe you've had difficulty in certain situations. You need to be able to forgive people, fear. Uh, maybe you just want to read the whole Bible. Like, I just want to read some stuff throughout the Bible. Click on one of those, okay? It's, it, guys, it's so easy. It's just ridiculous. Like people 50 years ago, like I can almost guarantee you they were way committed to the Lord than we were. Uh, we have way more tools than they did, okay? So uh, next step, right? So you've gone through that. You picked a study that you want to do. Pick a study, okay? So it's, yeah, if you pick that topic, you're going to go through, you're going to pick a study. Maybe um, I'm looking through the Bible and there's one uh, deeper into Scripture on Matthew. I just like the book of Matthew. I'm going to go through that. And I'm going to take a look at it. So pick one of those. And the next step, you're going to start reading. So I clicked on this one. Uh, where uh, did the Bible come from? Hey, that's really cool. Maybe you're like, my professors at school say, I was not real. People made it up. People made up a lot of stuff to do with other religions and cults, but the Bible's not made up. So uh, you take a look at that. You say, where did the Bible come from? I want to know that. And I want to learn about it. Okay? So there you go. All right, if you didn't take a picture of that, please, please do that uh, because it will help you. I promise if you don't know what you're supposed to do, uh, what you're going to read, you just open your Bible, you do the whole, God, would you please give me an answer? I'm going to pick a place, and when I open it, there's going to be the answer. That doesn't work, by the way. Um, I've tried it. I've tried it. So go through these steps. If you want to grab one of the quiet times on the back table, please do that. Um, guys, I want to encourage you that it's, it's not just about you maybe find one of these studies and just reading through it as fast as you can okay yeah i mean i read part of it i sort of skimmed it and then i'm done all right did my quiet time it's about spending time with god in prayer you know we've already talked about those things evan austin have shared with you just different things about bible study about prayer and this is just you just really just the basics of i need to pick a time and 
pick a location, I need to do it on a regular basis, and it's going to take you time. If you skip a day, here's what's going to happen. you got to start over the 45 days, okay? So, sorry, uh, that's just the truth, all right? So you got to start that over. If you start that tomorrow and you go through, then by middle of November, you will have a habit that could change the rest of your life, okay? I promise. But most of us are not disciplined enough to do it. Maybe you also need to include somebody else in it. Maybe one of your friends who's here tonight says, now, I'm not good at that either. I really need to commit to doing that on a regular basis. Maybe a brother or sister, you can say, hey, because you hold me accountable. Or maybe you have a leader, a leader who's here tonight that you can share with. Please, please do that uh, because I promise you, there's nothing that's been more impactful in my life than spending time with God daily. And when I get I get to those points in life where I'm like, God, I just don't want you to do. I don't know what you want me to do. God, I'm so discouraged. God, why is this happening? And I spend that time with him. He gives me clarity, right? Like he gave Jesus clarity. And the scripture said, even though Jesus was God in the flesh, he spent time with them and he went away just all the time. People are all surrounding him. He says, I need to be with God the Father. I need to get clarity. I need to get power. I need to get direction on what I'm supposed to do with my life, what I'm supposed to do each day. You have access to it, God's word, and a relationship with him, an intimate relationship with him, all right? More than you can have with anybody else in the entire world the rest of your life. And I promise you, I promise you, these are things that are they're basic, right? That's what we called it back to the basics because quiet time should be something that we do on a regular basis. We call ourselves believers in Jesus Christ. And there it is. That's easy. That's all you got to do. Okay? So I want to pray for you guys. Everybody by your heads, close your eyes. And uh, maybe you're here tonight. I just want you to spend just a few moments just asking the Lord, hey, um, God, where am I at? Do I spend any time with you? Do I spend a little bit of time with you? Do I uh, make any time at all? Uh, maybe spend a couple of days a week. That's great. you got to start somewhere. Um, I want to pray for you and encourage you guys. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never uh, put your faith and trust in Jesus. Maybe you don't know what that's about. And spending time in God's Word is weird. Um, I think that's normal if you don't know God, if you don't have a relationship with Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. And So uh, if that's you, I just want you to ask one of our leaders tonight about how you can uh, have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And they'd be glad to talk to you. So uh, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to go to our small groups. Uh, God, we just come to you tonight, and uh, we just thank you that you've given us what you have in your word. Uh, God, all the things that have happened from the beginning of time to now, uh, God, the direction that you give us in our lives, God, it's not just reading your word, God. We know it's talking to you, it's seeking you out in prayer, in Bible study, in just being quiet. God, I pray that you would remove all the, the negative ideas that uh, all the students who are here have in their minds about uh, what that means. God, it's not punishment. God, you don't want us to, to feel punished. You want us to have joy. You want us to have fulfillment. And God, we know that that only comes from spending time with you. God, we, we wonder. I know there's students here who wonder why they're just constantly unhappy, why they're uh, making decisions that are pushing them in the wrong direction, direction setting their uh, trajectory for life in a bad direction, God, not following you. I just pray for those guys that are here tonight that uh, they would trust in you completely. If there's somebody here who doesn't know you, um, God, that they would enter into that relationship with you tonight. Um, God, we thank you. We love you. And uh, we're so thankful for what you've done for us. Should we pray? Amen.